Chapter 9 Henry Henry Brown looked up as the bell overhead tinkled, announcing a customer. Only it wasn't a customer, it was Miss Lockwood. Are you finished already? he asked. No, but Elizabeth wanted me to place an order for some fabrics we don't have right away. Ah, that makes sense. He pulled his order pad out from under the counter and grabbed a pencil. And what does Mrs. Baxter need? She would like five yards of taffeta in burgundy, five in a dark green, and five in a sapphire blue. Henry wrote the order down and then glanced back up at her. Anything else? I don't believe so. He nodded and jotted down a few things he needed as well. All right, I'll get this order placed right away. Thank you. She shifted on her feet as if she wanted to say something more, but then she glanced upstairs. I suppose I better get upstairs in case anyone comes in. Or you could stay down here. You'll see them if someone enters the store, and I wouldn't mind having someone to talk to. Miss Lockwood glanced at the stairs one more time before pressing her lips together and nodding. I'd like that. Is there anything I can do to help you? Oh, no. I couldn't ask you to help me. Not until I could pay you, anyway. It's all right. I like being helpful, and there's nothing I can do for Elizabeth right now. Henry pressed his lips together as he considered her offer. He couldn't let her work for free. It wouldn't be right. I'll tell you what. I'll let you help in exchange for something from the store. Miss Lockwood offered him a shy smile. If you insist, I'm moving in with Mrs. Nelson tonight, and it would be nice to decorate my room a little. Henry blinked in surprise. Mrs. Nelson the widow? Did something happen to Mrs. Baxter? Oh, no, nothing like that. But the Baxters only have a single bedroom, and it didn't feel right to take over part of their living room. Elizabeth said Mrs. Nelson was thinking of opening a boarding house, and we stopped there this afternoon. She agreed to let me be her first one. That's wonderful. Why did his heart give a little flutter at the thought of her being so close? Well, if you're sure you don't mind helping, I do need to restock some of the shelves. Shall we start there? The smile that Miss Lockwood gave him took years off her face and that flutter in his heart grew, sending a warmth through his chest. Absolutely. Mrs. Baxter hasn't told me much about you. Did you work in Chicago, or were you married? He asked, as he led the way to the small storage area. He didn't think Miss Lockwood was a danger, but it did bother him that he knew almost nothing about her. Married, no, she said softly. I've never been married, but I did work. Were you a seamstress like Miss Lockwood? He pressed, since she hadn't offered the information on her own. No, I worked in a restaurant establishment. From the slow and stilted way she'd said the words, Henry knew that wasn't the whole truth. He sneaked a closer look at her as he paused in front of a shelf. The lines in her face spoke of hardship, and there was a rounding of her shoulders that he'd seen on a few women who had the unfortunate luck of being married to a man who ruled with his fists rather than with his words and compassion. But she'd said she'd never been married, so perhaps a ruthless boss? Ah, well, the customer service aspect should serve you well. He wanted to know more of her story, but he wanted her to tell him when she was ready. As you can see, this is where we keep most of the stock. I don't keep much on hand other than essentials. Coffee, flour, sugar, and some household goods. But there are times when the shelves are fuller, like when I get produce from the local farms, or when wholesale merchandisers come through town with goods we don't often have. I check the store items each day and restock anything that is low. Miss Lockwood nodded. That makes sense. Wonderful. 
Perhaps when business picks up, I can officially hire you and teach you how to take orders and run the cash machine for the times when I have to leave the store. Her eyes widened, and a look of fear crossed her features. You would want me to be in charge of the store? Only on occasion. There are some times I have to travel into a larger city to get items we need, although those trips might be fewer if this catalog ordering works out. Oh, I'm sure it will. I mean, you wouldn't want to leave me in charge of your store. You barely know me. Henry's brow furrowed at her words. Yes, it was true that he didn't know her well, but that didn't feel like the real reason for her hesitation, and it made him wonder what the truth was. That might be true, but Mrs. Baxter trusts you, and that's enough for me. Her gaze skittered away from his. Well, I appreciate your confidence, and we can discuss it more later. Until then, is there anything we need to stock now? We could use some more coffee and flour. How about I grab the flour while you get the coffee? Miss Lockwood nodded, grabbed a few cans of coffee, and headed back to the main store area as if she couldn't get away fast enough. Though Henry felt certain the reaction wasn't against him personally, he couldn't help but wonder what Miss Lockwood was hiding, and if he was wrong to trust her.